In today's tutorial we're gonna work up the step up pillow and this is actually really kind of a cool concept and I haven't done anything like this before. So let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial we are going to um, work on this particular pattern. It's called the step up pillow and this one is a really interesting concept because the fact is is that there's really not two sides to it and in fact what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a complete revolution around with one panel and right where it's like a puzzle. So right where this one is here you are going to then sew it to the other side to where the gap is on the other side. So when you turn it all the way around. So you have to obviously get a generous length but this is kind of like a puzzle on the way that things are being put together. So within today's pattern this is the original size yarn that it asked for, or hook that it asked for. It was an eight millimeter size uh, L crochet hook today. Let me turn it up the up other way. And that's what it looks like here as a smaller example. Now I think in, to yourself and I thought to myself gee that looks pretty spacey and for a pillow. So I actually did a smaller example using a six millimeter size crochet hook a size uh, J and you can see the difference of how this stitching works out versus one versus the other. So you can customize this in order to change your hook in order to make it work and in actual fact it's not a big deal to change your hook to be smaller with this yarn because it's so uh, flexible in that sense. So today's pattern I'm gonna stick true to the pattern. I'm gonna use an L size eight millimeter crochet hook today and I'm gonna tell you how to change the size of the, this so that you can keep things in balance. The whole key concept of this one is to make sure that you have the right amount of stitches so that it does puzzle together when you go to turn it all the way around. We're gonna be using Bernat Maker Home Deck today. This is a great new uh, yarn line that is meant for home decor and you're gonna see it, it works out really quite amazing. So let's take a look closer at this pattern. So it's just a one page uh, pattern that we have today. The trick is all within this diagram. You're seeing a lot of chain work and you're seeing a lot of really crazy things going on in this particular pattern. You have to trust in me in this one. This one's actually, it's getting started I think is more the harder point than anything. But then once you get it, it, you get it. Like you can just fly along in this one. You're also, you're seeing like half moons, kind of upside down half moons. Um, you'll see it's worked in the back loop only. You wanna do that. It actually creates a beautiful texture to it and it actually makes it quite interesting. And so you'll see within the today's pattern is that it works out to be quite amazing at the same time. So if you'd like to do the multiples, I just did a, I noticed a, an actual error. So what every one of these are is that in order to do this to keep it in balance, you have to chain in multiples of 11 and then add six. So that allows you to get down and across and then back up and then you have to add the extra block on the other side to keep it in balance because they have to equal each other. So if for example that you come all the way around and the other side is not uh, completely opposite, then what happens is that it's not gonna puzzle together. So it's in multiples of 11 plus six and we're gonna go through that now and you'll see how this is being put together. So you'll need two different colors for this one if you like the effect today and you use two colors for uh, one color for two lines and then the next color for two lines. Let's begin. So let's begin and do a slip knot and you can chain 94 if you like to match exactly the pattern. You're using an eight millimeter size L crochet hook today or you can do a multiples of 11 plus 6. So remember keep them in 11 so you go all the way to 11. Decide if it's big enough, yes or no. If not, do another 11 and keep doing that and at the very end of your chain at 6. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do a couple groups of 11. So I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Big enough yes or no, if the answer is no then you keep going. Remember that this when you do the chain is going to be like this. So it's gonna come down, uh, sorry it's gonna come across and then down and then partially back up. So it's not the width that you're seeing out here, it's gonna be compressed. So let's do another set of 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So then you got your 11 and then you're gonna add six when you're satisfied with it. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And let's begin row number one. For dimensional shape just so you know that when I chained 11 it's, it's about two inches span from one side to another whenever you do a chaining of 11. So that will give you an indication of when you're doing with this pattern uh, using an L millimeter or side, I'm sorry using an L crochet hook or a size eight millimeter. It's about two inches for every 11 uh, chains. Let's begin. 
When I left you before I said let's do row number one. This is not row number one. This is the foundation row. So this is gonna get us started because there is technically a row number one. <laughs> so what I want you to do is that I want you to go a fourth chain from the hook and I want you to double crochet. So counting back. So one, two, three, and four. Turn it over and I want you to double crochet into that stitch and I want you to double crochet into the next stitch. Just like that. So now we have to get back down to the chain. So we have to do a chaining of three to come back down. So one, two, three, and we slip stitch into the next chain available to you. So it's like a block kind of concept. And now what we have to do is that this is the block that's in the up. So if you look at, it, at this other example, so we're up here and now the next block has to be down here. So we're up here, we're going down. So in order to do that, we have to skip a total of three stitches so that we skip the next three chains. So one, two, and three. Go to the fourth and I get the back hump on it just to make it easier and I'm gonna double crochet into the fourth chain. I'm gonna do that one plus the next one so that there's two down there. So here's the thing. Now we have to get back up to where this other block is. So in order to do that, we have to take the chain and we slip stitch to the fourth chain over. So one, two, three, four. So just take the, that one and just put it onto the hook and slip it. So you see how it kind of takes it from the, the base and then brings it back up. So now we're gonna do another block in the up formation. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three, and we're just on the next chain available to you. We are going to double crochet. Just like that and, and double crochet into the next one. And now we have to head back down because the next block is down below. So, so you see, see up, down, up. So the next one to go down is you chain three, one, two, three, and then just slip stitch it to the next chain. So now we're ready to do the block that's in the basement. So let's say this is the basement, that's the upper level. So now we have to skip over uh, three of them. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and double crochet. See by skipping that you're creating that extra um, kind of like a double crochet down and then you're gonna double crochet into the next one available to you. Now we're gonna head back upstairs kind of concept. So now you're gonna skip one, two, three, go to the fourth just like that and then we have to then just do the, the top here. So let's uh, begin to do that. So we have to then move up. So one, two, three, okay. And now we're gonna move across this line and uh, technically there should be three stitches left. So we're just gonna double crochet ourselves across. So one, and I got another one here, two. And I think I must have dropped a stitch at some point. I must have, I might have skipped over something when I did it, which technically I shouldn't have, but I'm actually one stitch short, so I'm just gonna throw one in at the end. So I might have just accidentally just skipped over an extra stitch as I was coming across. So basically they have to be up and down, so these have to match each other. So if the last one was up, this one should be up and etc. We're gonna keep on the same yarn and let's move on to row number one. So we're here now in row number one and we're gonna chain up three and we're gonna double crochet in the back loop only. Okay, so row number, every other row now is just back loops. That's why there's a half moon. And then we're gonna chain three to slip stitch. You will notice that, okay, so this is the upstairs, this is the basement. So you'll notice that here there's only two um, double crochets in the back loop and before we then slip stitch and come back upstairs. So it's only in the upstairs level that you're ever gonna see four or directly across from each other and then in the basement there will only be two when we go to do this from now on. When you change colors this will be a lot more obvious. So when I look at my little sample here you'll see that in the upstairs we had four and the basement we only had two. And that just makes it a little bit simpler to be able to look at. Okay, so let's move along to row number one. So we're now starting in the upstairs and then we're gonna go downstairs and up and down and keep doing that all the way across. So to start the upstairs we have to chain up three, one, two, and three and we double crochet in the back loop only 
now for the rest of this project except for if you have to slip stitch. So you're just gonna back loop only, double crochet into the next and back loop only in the next double crochet. This is what creates the texture and then you've gotta come back down to the basement so you gotta take the stairs. So chain three and then back down and you want to just slip stitch it to the top of that chain and you will notice then we have to place the two in the basement. There's only two stitches available to you and so you're just gonna double crochet in the back loop in the basement. And that fills that in and you're gonna notice that when I finish this, this is the same row uh, height as the next upper level. Okay, you're gonna slip stitch but we have to keep going higher now as we keep going so we have to chain up four or sorry, chain up three. One, two, three back loop only and I want to do the next two double crochets. So everything is now back loop only when it's right physically into a stitch and now I need to head back downstairs. So I'm gonna chain up three, one, two, three, slip stitch to this chain and now I got the basement. So there's only two stitches right in the middle that you can play with. Go in the back loop only and you're gonna keep doing that back and forth basically for the remainder of this thing. The only difference is now at this point is that you have to change your colors in order to make it give it the same effect that you see in the model's photo. So slip stitch it to the top of the next chain and then head back upstairs. So one, two, three and when you're doing your final there will be three stitches left and they're each in the back loop only and we're gonna fasten off this yarn and change our yarn so the colors stay consistent for two rows before we change color to something different and I will do that and I'll show you how to do that. So this is what it looks like here. So whatever is in the top always stays in the top so that it never changes. So we're just kinda top and then going back to the basement to catch that back up and etc. And you'll notice that these stitches will start to relax as you're working them out a way through as well. So let's uh, just trim our work. Okay and I wanna just position these in a way that I just pulled it through and I'm gonna hide it in some stitch work that when I come back over this again that I can trap that physically underneath so that you'll never see that. So let's just turn our work and go for the next row. So grabbing my next color I'm going to create a slip stitch or slip knot sorry. Put it onto my hook and I'm gonna come into the top of the first um, uh, double crochet here and I'm going to just leave the straggler down on top and I'm going to join it with the slip stitch and now I'm in the upstairs and I wanna continue to be there so I wanna chain up three. One, two, three and then just pinching this straggler down going into the back loop only now is that you just want to go in the back loops and just double crochet. You do that one plus the next one. So in the ends there's always three double crochets in a row whether you're finishing or starting. Now we're gonna head back downstairs to catch that back up so we're gonna go chain three and slip stitch it to the chain and notice that I'm gonna put that straggler down um, both the yellow and the blue in so that it catches underneath as I do that and then I can safely cut that out in just a moment. So I'm gonna put those out in behind so it's out of my way. So now I'm gonna do the basement. So there's only two stitches in the basement that I gotta worry about. Back loop only again and I'm going to just fill those in with a double crochet and you'll see now the basement's now caught up to the next level here. So just slip stitch it directly to the next chain and then go back upstairs. So you wanna chain three. So one, two, three and then the next two are double crochets back loop only and then go back downstairs. So chain three, one, two, three, back down top of the chain, slip stitch and then you're back to do the basement again. So back loop only for the next two Okay, slip stitch it to the next chain that's kind of equal level and then head back upstairs. So one, two, three and then there will be three double crochets left and by the time you get all the way across so you just keep going back and forth up and down the stairs as you work your way across. It's the only way I can describe this particular project and once you get all the way to the end you just turn your work and begin again with the same color. So you can see that you've gotten the upstairs and the downstairs and you can see that you've got lots of texture going on at the same time. Let's turn our work and try this uh, row one more time.
let's turn our work and let's begin this row. So this is in the upper le level, this is basement, upper basement and etc. all the way across. So we're gonna keep ourselves in the, in the upper level. So chain up three and we're gonna double crochet in the back loop only for the next two of them. Cause that chain three counts as one of the double crochet. And then go back down here. So chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch to the chain and now we're heading into the basement. So there will only be two stitches in the basement. Just look for the same colors, it's easier. And just back loop only for two double crochets. And once you get your two in there, you'll notice that you're at the same height as the next upper level. So you're just gonna slip stitch it to the chain and then you're gonna head back upstairs. So one, two, three, double crochet back loop only, the next two. Now that you have your two in there, you're gonna go back downstairs. So one, two, three, slip stitch it to the chain. And then you're in the basement again. So there's gonna be two down there. Okay, slip stitch it to the chain and then head back upstairs. So if you can understand going upstairs, downstairs with this one, you got it made. So one, two, three, going back upstairs, the final three back loop only for double crochets. So you're gonna notice that you're gonna have some really beautiful texture work because you are working the back loop only. Um, it's really not a uh, problem with this particular one. So you're just gonna continue to do this for your whole duration of your, your blanket or sorry, your pillow and you can trim out your yarns as you've got them hidden in. And so what you have to do with this particular pattern then once you get to the size that you need to get to, so I, I got a bigger one here, is that all you just gotta do is fold it. Okay, just look at what side that you like the best. Fold it and this will then puzzle into each other. Okay, so just look at it like it's a puzzle. So puzzle it into each other and then sew it shut and essentially then you will have a complete pillow. So you'll have to fold it, you'll, fo you'll do in your sides. Okay, so you'll sew in your sides and then you'll just puzzle it together and then just sew it with the pillow form currently inside and therefore it's a permanent uh, pillow inside. So this is how you do the step up pillow. Hopefully you enjoy this project. I enjoy the texture. I can see doing afghans with this. I think it's really quite a pretty stitch, a pretty concept and uh, I can see it uh, really great concepts with this particular one. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.